Yeah, you, guys had a, you guys had a great chat the other day, by the way, Nicholas and Snake. I enjoyed that the part. Uh, I, I think I watched most of it. Well, Smokey, yeah, what do all... you what do you think? Because you said the first time we chatted, you said that you kind of agreed with uh, my point about how we don't know whether the that maximal that that is the hypothetical is the actual maximal. And I was trying to get Nicholas to uh, kind of connect the dots there for me. Go ahead, Nicholas. Oh, he was asking you. Oh, oh, right. you were asking me. Were you asking me? Yeah, because you mentioned something about agreeing with me about that part of the argument the first time. Uh, oh, okay, run it by me again. I'm sorry. I, was, I, I actually thought you were addressing Nicholas. I, I was paying attention to chat. I'm sorry. Run it by me one more time. Yeah, I mean, I don't need me to rehash it because that was like last night or something, wasn't it? Uh, well, there was, yeah, well, you guys were having a chat. Yeah, well, yeah, you guys were having a chat last night. But you had had... A conversation on my channel initially where I think you guys were kind of just like going through it like top to bottom. Yeah. So I think where you were saying you actually agreed was when I was saying that there was this hypothetical maximal and uh, Nicholas was saying that it the more maximal its qualities, the more likely it is or... Um, Right. This, this hypothetical maximal that exists, but we don't, or that we can hypothesize about, but we don't know if it actually does exist. Right. And, and I guess that's kind of what I was drawing from, of looking at it from, like, I think I w what I was kind of almost saying or trying to draw at is that was one, to me, a weaker component of it because there was like a unsubstantiated presupposition in it. Like that there needed to be something to almost sure up the base of that standard that the that this being this this the likelihood of this being existing is high i i feel like there was some sort of potential like there needed some sort of evidence base or logic base to kind of more support it because it felt like it was kind of just sitting out there on its own type thing do you, do you get what i'm saying yeah i agree Maybe maybe Nicholas could could help us there. Maybe he could clarify it or connect it uh, for us a, a little better. It just it seemed like it was one of those things where, if this thing exists, if this was the case, then the rest will flow and follow. But then we were kind of like, okay, what is the justification for this this base this base argument of the exactly. maximal? existence thing actually being that which um exists or is it the, i guess let me try and rephrase let me try and re redirect this to try to make it a little bit simpler and easier and maybe more in question form um is the maximal being actual or potential and how do we know oh yeah so then um how I addressed that in the argument. I, I don't think you were there for the entire stream. So I don't think you were there when it got to this point. Okay. But um, Snake was using examples like maximal whales being a maximally large whale being larger and a maximally high penguin being higher, like a penguin on the moon. Okay. And a maximally tall tree being taller. And in this case, I was um, using the maximals of my defined terms of harmony and purpose, and those cause it to the hypothetical to be more likely. So instead of like a hypothetical, a hypothetical maximal tree, hypothetical maximally tall tree being taller, we're talking about a hypothetically um, the hypothetical maximally likely being being more likely right well i guess and from, so from, that, that, but it, um if i can just finish real quick yeah, no i'm sorry with that, the conclusion that comes to is that um the idea is that this is the best argument so it's the most likely source and that's where it's going and then um if someone has a better suggestion you know i'm kind of all ears and ready to fight it out Sure. But, um, that was kind of where I came to, I guess, um, yesterday. Um, I guess maybe how I'm kind of seeing it, maybe I'll let Snake respond. He can kind of chime in here a little bit. I guess maybe how I'm seeing it, like, 
Hmm, kind of like a like a floating art sculpture, like where you kind of have these three components, and they're not actually standing on anything, but they're floating there. They're there, and they're all relying on each other, but they're not relying really on anything else. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's almost like a floating construct. Like like I, I get your argument, and you have these you have these these chains of logic that kind of lead to the existence of this greater optimal being but those that chain those things underneath it kind of seem to be lacking their own supports i guess is 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 maybe i'll I'll yield the snake maybe he can clean that up a little better well yeah i mean he's he said that uh it's a special case for the creator of the universe where that same argument doesn't work for like the hypothetically maximal uh, hamster doesn't necessarily exist just because it ha- this hypothetical has more purpose than some other hypothetical or actual. But the uh, but when applied to the creator of the universe, this argument works because um, it's a special case because it's responsible for its own existence. And while I think that that might i mean it could be true but it it still doesn't quite connect the dots like so why does it being responsible for its own existence make it as make it exempt from this type of reasoning it's not being exempt for anything it's changing the function i mean it's changing you know the the um the process that the logic is going through so if we change the hypothetical qualities of something that's responsible for its own existence we can alter our hypothetical to be more cohesive or more um, similar to truth. You know, we can get a better and better hypothetical. And then... Uh, I, I like... Yeah. I, I will say this. I like how Nicholas is constructing it through the realms of potentiality and probability. I do like that, Nicholas. Um, that you're not making it more of like a proof claim you're making it this is the more reasonable of the options amongst them so i think i think i understand I, maybe that's maybe that's what i'm missing here maybe that's more your actual support structure is that these mm-hmm. these components are uh inductively more reasonable conclusions to the existence of this being than the non-existence of this being am i am i getting this a little bit closer there um yeah, that's a big part of it. I mean, um, you know, I appreciate doing the very best with the argument and taking the criticism full on, but really the argument is formed to express what I discovered about what is, from an objective standpoint, the most likely source of existence. That, like, so people who don't know, who, people might think that a god like the Christian god is not likely. And um, that's not necessarily a good starting place. The fact is, is that it is very likely something like that, you know? And um, that was a step that I had to go through. And so I found a way to put that step and express what I discovered through this argument. So it's more expressing myself than trying to quote unquote win an argument. But, you know, it's part of like the review process, right? The peer review to see what I can do winning these debates. Right. So that might explain it some when you talk about like, it's not appealing to like exact proof. It's like, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it'll get to exact proof or, I mean, I consider it proof based on some of the intuitive obviouses, obviousnesses involved. You know, there's some intuitively obvious things that allow for, I guess, presuppositions that make it very strong. Interesting. So he still isn't able to bridge the gap between a hypothetical maximal and an actual maximal. He just says that to presuppose it makes intuitive sense to him and thus strengthens the argument. But when it actually, no, question begging does not make the argument stronger. It makes it fallacious by definition. And by definition, that makes it a weaker argument. Uh, It's, he's also admitted that it's special pleading. His argument is that a being of maximal purpose and harmony which is also the source of all existence, must have maximal intelligence and therefore is maximally likely to exist. None of this follows. It does not follow that the actual source of the universe has 
maximally conceivable harmony, purpose, or intelligence, nor does it follow that these traits actually exist, at least all in one being. Uh, he admits that none of this follows with any other type of argument. Um, this is basically the ontological argument, which was defeated with the greatest possible island type of uh, refutation. Um, but he, he says this is a special case. It doesn't follow those same rules because this hypothetical thing that he's talking about is hypothetically responsible for its own existence. Except we can show this excuse to be false since I can hypothesize all kinds of things that are responsible for their own existence that are neither intelligent nor maximally harmonious and purposeful. Uh, I could just say that the source of the universe is responsible for its own existence and it's not those things. And it's still just a hypothetical. There's no way for us to know which one is more likely. And there's no way to know which one is actually true. Because likelihood doesn't even mean true. Um, you're, you're more likely to get a number above two on a die. But that doesn't mean that it's the actual number that's going to come up. Um, so... Uh, this is why he has to uh, beg the question, because these, if this was true, we could have multiple contradictory causes of the universe that had to be true by that same metric. Um, the premise is not known outside of the conclusion, so he has to assert that this God being exists as an unsound premise in order to conclude that it exists. So it's still a bad argument.